Hello, I just got this package and I'm hoping that is something interesting. I'm going to open it up and hopefully it is what I think it is. So in the box were these beautiful devices and if you're not sure what these are then that's okay because I don't really know what they were intended for in the first place either. I wasn't particularly good at physics and so I never saw any of these in the wild but they're basically lab equipment or test equipment that helps you find faults in, I don't know, telephone lines, helps you calibrate radios. I don't really know, I'd be making it up if I was to tell you. However, the interesting thing for me is that you can ostensibly use these to make music with or at least use them to make strange sounds that you can incorporate into your music. The reason for this is because because these are essentially oscillators, they generate different types of signal which you can then control or not control or fuck up in different ways. If you look at the front panel on these you'll see that there are different waveform outputs and so that means you can theoretically use these as oscillators. One of the things that really fascinates me is the idea of taking equipment or any kind of device that wasn't necessarily originally intended to make music with and using it to make music or at least to make sounds that you can then incorporate into your music and finding new and different sounds is part of the fun of the whole process. I've had my eye on these kinds of devices for a while but I didn't really know where to start. After watching a whole bunch of Heinbach's videos and seeing the sheer amount of different equipment that he uses and how he uses it to make music I decided to take the plunge and I got these devices for pretty cheap. They're actually way lighter than I expected them to be. They always looked much heavier uh, online, but of course it might just be these that are particularly light. Before I can actually start making music or getting sounds out of them though, there's a few different considerations that I'm going to have to take into account. First of all, they use banana jacks, which some people might use on their particular systems, but I have never used them so I need to find a way to go from banana to standard audio connectors. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I might end up building a jumbler box or I might just use adapters but that's something I'm going to have to figure out. I do have a box full of weird adapters so hopefully there's something in there. The second thing you have to take into account is that these devices output voltage that is way higher than standard audio devices can handle. And so if you plug this directly into, you know, your interface or anything else, then there's a good chance that something is going to get broken or blow up in some spectacular fashion if you're unlucky like me. So I'm going to have to do a wee bit of research. I believe I can just use a passive mixer or some kind of attenuator to bring the levels down. My multimeter isn't working at the moment though, so that causes me some problems in terms of measuring the voltage out. Uh, I might just have to wait until I get that fixed. The top one has an attenuator built in, which is a good first step. But this second one, this very beautiful blue one, doesn't have an attenuator built in, which means it's going to be a bit of a trickier beast to tame. The test equipment is now set up in this corner of my home studio. What I'm going to do first, before I connect anything up to my interface or my speakers or anything like that, is I want to make sure that the output level I'm getting isn't going to power through and blow up my stuff. How I'm going to do this is hopefully with a double fallback solution to give a couple of stages before it hits anything else to make sure that it's not too loud or the voltage is too high. I've got a passive mixer up here, just a bog standard passive mixer. Um, four inputs and one output. All the levels are set at zero. This then goes into my Behringer mixer down here, which is an old mixer I've had for years. And then all of the inputs on that are also as low as they can go. The reason I'm going into this second is because it has a VU meter um, down the bottom. So I'll be able to see what the level is before, you know, without having to listen to it and risk my headphones or any output equipment. If this blows up, this won't blow up, but if this blows up then no big deal, it's old, whatever. For connectivity, what I'm going to do is, as I said earlier, there's banana jack connections in these and so I've got cables, sorry, I've got adapters that go from banana to BNC and then I've got a BNC to RCA connector. Oh shit, this is the wrong one. Oh, I've got another one. I've got this adapter 
which will be banana to BNC and that takes the ground and the output from the function generator, converts it into BNC and then I've got a BNC to RCA connection. Then I'm going to use an RCA cable to plug into the mixer and from there it's fine. I'm going to connect it up before I power it on. I have powered them on already to test that they turn on. So I know they do turn on. I'm a wee bit nervous about this because I've never used this before and the voltage is meant to be high. I'm just adjusting the range of the frequency here so that hopefully it's something we can hear. These function generators weren't designed for music in the first place and so many of them extend well beyond the audible frequency range. Some of them don't even output frequencies that we can hear. And that's something I hadn't quite considered, first of all, but luckily the ones I got, I think, do. I believe the upper frequency range for humans is 20k or something like that. And of course, my dog's in the background. Maybe his ears will prick up, hopefully not. I'm gonna power it all on now and hopefully Everything will be fine. Everything's at zero, the pads are on, and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, I've turned it on and nothing has blown up. That's good. I'm going to turn up the output on the mixer just a wee bit, the passive mixer. Uh, I'm not seeing anything yet. I'm a wee bit wary. I'm just turning things up gradually. I don't know whether the output of this, when it's at zero, is actually zero. So I'm going to turn everything back down. <laughs> And then I'll turn it up a wee bit more. Could of course also be the frequency that's the issue. Okay, so I'm actually getting an output now on the mixer. I've had to go higher than I expected I would have to go, but um, all right. I've got the output level at like eight on this, which is very strange to me. I swear to God, when I just pressed that button to go into a higher frequency range, a car outside like squealed and I heard it and I thought this box had somehow like burst out and was communicating with me. I'm clearly losing my mind over this stuff. Okay, I'm getting an acceptable level on this. It could be that the output of this isn't as hot as some of the other ones are and that's good to know. I've got the mixer like, I mean pretty high up, the passive mixer. I'm on eight on the function generator and I mean the mixer pretty high up as well. Alright, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to connect the mixer up to the bottom one, I'm going to turn it on and <laughs> hopefully that one will be okay. Unfortunately the adapter I've got is a certain width apart. It doesn't fit between the ground and the output. So... Alright, so I had to go find an adapter so I could test out the device on the bottom there and it was fine because the adapter that earlier I thought was a piece of shit and they'd send me the wrong one actually turned out to be the one that saved the day because rather than just plugging in straight into the two output jacks from the function generator I was able to use two banana cables that plugged into the adapter that then plugged into the BNC adapter that plugged into the RCA adapter they went into the mixer. So everything was fine, it was just a bit of a pain. But we got there, I then had to go and have a drink. So um, it's now night time and I'm still fucking about this stuff. Anyway, I tested the levels like we did with the above function generator. And I could show you it, but it was really boring because it was basically me doing the same thing of like ooh, 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 and shiting myself every time I turned up one decibel in case I blew a voltage, uh, blew a voltage. Needless to say, I didn't blow up anything. It was exactly the same. I don't know whether these specific function generators just are quite low voltage output or whether, I don't know, whether that's just the way it is. Now what I'm gonna do is plug it in the interface and uh, hear what sound it makes, if anything. The top one here, which is the, I've got the top function generator, which is just the single voice output, or the single waveform output, I should say. Um, it is plugged in, so if I turn it on, it should theoretically uh, make a noise when I turn the mixer up. So I'm going to do that. And then what I'm going to do is, there is a VCF input. I don't know what the fuck VCF stands for in terms of um, these things, but 
it means something a wee bit different in Eurorec land, I believe, or at least it does to me. So VCF input on the top one basically means you can control the, as far as I understand, it means you can control the frequency with an external input. So it's not one volt per octave or anything like that, as far as I'm aware, but it should give me some control, hopefully. The bottom one I can do that with, I just have to treat it like a triple oscillator drone, which is fine. Um, but it's a different beast, that's, that's, and that's why it's nice to have different, you know, devices, because they do different things and all that stuff. One thing I have to say, which I noticed as I was testing the bottom function generator, is that I thought there was no attenuator in that, but there is, there's, there's an attenuator pair uh, waveform. There are markings on this for the voltage output, which says something about 10, 10 VPK or 10 VPP. I don't know what the fuck that means. Maybe I could have looked that up and that might have been an idea before plugging it in. For the VCF input anyway, I don't know which camera will see this best, but I tried to use this already, which is like a step sequencer thing, a CV step sequencer, and it didn't work. And so I, I'm not entirely sure whether there's a problem with the connectors or something. You basically have to go through a whole number of stages to get to banana from mini jack output and so I'm definitely going to have to build a jumbler box I think to make things easier because otherwise there's so many adapters and shit for this that yeah. So the next stage is I'm going to turn up the mixer on the bearing R and see what it sounds like I've turned the pitch down on the function generator here I'm only taking the output from this one now because I can't be arsed setting up the rest of it. And then um, we'll see how it sounds. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That sounds pretty fucking good. Fucking hell. LFO, hear that clicking? Now I might just be imagining it right, but that oscillator sounds fat. It sounds really nice. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now then is I'm gonna Let's try patching up some to this, right? Because what I really want to do is that it's cool, I've got an oscillator, it's an LFO, cool, whatever, right? I've got lots of fucking oscillators and LFOs. What I want is to be able to control this in some kind of rhythmical way or like to modulate it, because otherwise it's just a static oscillator, right? Obviously the blue one in the bottom, I can't do that too. And to be honest, I'm not going to attempt to try that now. Um, but I want to find a way to modulate this. If I can't use this, then there must be a way to do it. So I've got some LFOs and I'm gonna try the LFO with it because maybe it's something to do with the, the output of this. Maybe this isn't like, you know, a high enough output voltage to trigger it, I don't know. So I'll find out. All right, so this is gonna be a wee bit chaotic, I think, because I have to move about and there's so many different sources of stuff going on that I don't know how to do it very well. So if you get seasick, I apologise. Tell Zoom to put image stabilisation in there, Q to N, and then we can talk about it. What I'm going to do here is take the output of the function generator, which is the middle square wave, I believe. I'm always shite with wave names. And I'm going to put it out straight, first of all, and then I'm going to modulate it with this LFO, which is the Frequency Central LFO on my Eurorack. You know that box of adapters and cables that you're like, ah, one, one day I'll use that, one day I'll use it, and you never chuck them out because you're like, one day that cable will come in handy. Today was that day. So basically I'm going from fucking, I don't know, uh, fucking a bunch of cables. 
it sounds fucking fantastic. What I'm going to do is plug the output of this LFO here, which has been clogged by the way from Pamela's workout, the original, not the fucking new workout, and I'm going to plug that straight into the VCF output and I'm going to see what it does. If Hopefully this is going to do something, because if not... Oh fuck, I was so worried this wouldn't work because then this whole thing would be fucking pointless. Now this works, we can fucking... Fuck me. Cycling through the waveform tonight, so my level. Let's try to add some drums. I've got drums clocked up to Pamela. down here
I have no idea if any of that recorded well or what it's going to look like when I put it in the computer. I don't know whether it was the oscillator that sounded great combined with whatever was going on. I mean, I've got lots of good sound in oscillators and that sounded pretty good, but I don't think it was just the oscillator. The best results I had was with the clockable LFO from uh, Frequency Central, which to be honest, I haven't used much up until now because I didn't know how to use. And maybe that's the point, right? With this, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with this. I don't know how to use this. I don't. There's no right way to use this. And so you use it the wrong way and then stuff comes out and it's wild. Whereas with Eurorack, I guess a lot of the time I'm like, there's a right way to use it, if you know what I mean. There's a right way you should patch this and that and you should think about this. Whereas you can't do that with this. That's like the most excited I've been about electronic music sounds in ages. See for what I spent on that, those two together were like 40 quid and the cables and stuff, let's say 50 quid. And compared to the Eurorack, like, uh, I mean, I was worried earlier because I was, you know, I got the oscillator sound, the woo, and I was like, oh, that's good, right? That sounds cool. But it's just an oscillator. Like, what am I going to do with it? Sample it or like add effects? Like, oh, cool, whatever. But with the VCF input, that was fucking amazing. Oh, it's brilliant. I'm really fucking, I'm, I'm very pleased with today's endeavours. I, I, test equipment, man. Heinbach is on to something, by the way.